Welcome to Electron Line. As we saw in the previous videos, that starting the collapse of a nebula into a protostar and eventually a star is not a certain thing. There's many, many nebulas out there that have been around for billions of years, ready to start the formation of stars, but don't have the critical density or the proper density for the process to start. And the internal pressures pushing back keep the gravity from winning and causing the formation of stars. But sometimes an event will help will help the gravitational force just a little bit. And here are three of those types of things that could potentially help. First of all, a supernova explosion, which we think is what started the formation of our own solar system, or nebulas colliding, or stellar radiation from a blue giant nearby. So the first example is that if we have a big supernova, and supernovas occur about once every 500 years or so in our Milky Way galaxy, the radiation pressure and the shock wave from a supernova could plow into a nebula, cause the nebula to collapse, and form a region in here where the density is sufficient for gravity then to take over and start the collapse of at least that portion of the, or the entire nebula into a protostar. The second example is two nebulas colliding. So sometimes, because nebulas are moving in space, as they're moving towards one another, they might collide into one another, and at the source of collision, the pressure will build up to the point where enough density is there, such that the gravity can then take over, and you can then collide that portion of the nebula, or the two nebulas that collide. So again, the collision will cause the density to go up, enough density will cause the collapse to start, and if gravity is then strong enough at that moment, there will be the formation of a protostar there. Or, the, probably the most likely scenario, is when you have a big blue giant nearby. Blue giants put out an enormous amount of UV and high energy radiation, blue light UV radiation, in much greater quantities than the radiation we get from a typical star like our sun. That radiation will then collide into one of the nebulas, and sure enough, the photons created from that the UV photons and the visible light photons that collide into the nebula will actually compress the nebula. And again, if a certain amount of density is reached, the collapse will then be almost certain and a new protostar will form in that location. So these are the three main events that will occur that will cause the formation of a protostar out of a nebula. Again, it's kind of like kickstarting the gravitational process that otherwise without it may not have enough force to start that initial collapse. And again, as I mentioned, this is the most likely scenario that caused our solar system to form. And the reason why we say that's the case, because there is some evidence that we found in, um, in uh, meteorites that we have found, I believe it was in Mexico, where when we analyzed it, the isotopes found within those, those meteor, meteorites that have fallen onto the Earth, we can see that those isotopes typically only occur in these kind of events. On top of that, the Sun and the fact that we have terrestrial planets, which contain all the heavy materials that are typically generated in these types of supernova explosions, especially the type 2 supernova explosions, that's usually an indication that the formation of the solar system was as a result of the type 2 supernova. And so, luckily for us, that's why we have terrestrial planets, that's why we have the elements that contain within our body, which were produced in that giant explosion. So those are the ways in which the formation of a star, at least, can get started. And the most likely scenario is this. And of course, this is a scenario that produces the type of planets that we have in our own solar system. And that is how it's done. Oh, they're huge. Well, they're huge in the amount of energy they produce. But size-wise? Uh, Well, think about the explosion being right there and the energy being spread into space. So we've seen some nebulas that were the result, like the Crab Nebula. That's a pretty large nebula that, that is as a result of one of those supernova explosions. So it's a fair, it's a fair representation. <laughs> um, they're not quite that big. <laughs> but I wanted to show they're blue giants, right? They're, they're bigger. <laughs> All right, if you like it, uh, <laughs> here's the blue giant. <laughs> Not to scale, right? Not to scale. All right. <laughs>